All the media wanted to talk about was whether the Tea Party was up or down, whether it was dead or alive. But that missed the point entirely because the Tea Party never was, never has been, never will be a political party. Because you see, it's a movement. It's a movement about returning us and our nation to our founding principles, front and center, by contending for them in public discourse. And when, as you said, the Patriots threw tea into the Boston Harbor, they weren't just protesting an unfair tax. I'm a former federal tax lawyer. I hate high taxes. That isn't just what the Boston Tea Party was, was about. It was also about, also about cementing the soul of our nation. And the soul is this, opposition to an overreaching government and a fierce passion for self-determination. And it's the idea of the Declaration of Independence that infuses really the meaning and being of what it is to be an American. And it's this. It's the idea that there is a creator, and we acknowledge that in the Declaration, that a creator created all of us and created us equal. That in itself is profound. It, as the Declaration of Independence says, it isn't a government. It isn't a politician that gives any of us our rights. We were given those rights by virtue of birth, by the fact that a creator created us and gave us these rights. They're inalienable, which means no politician, no government takes them away because only a creator can give them to us. It's a phenomenal philosophy upon which the nation was founded. Those three inalienable rights that the founders enumerated were these. The, the inalienable right to life. Only a creator can give it, and only a creator can take it away. The second was liberty. Freedom, the franchise that was intended for every human on the face of this earth. Every human doesn't enjoy it, but that's what makes this government exceptional. Because we recognize that freedom is yours not something government can give, and certainly something government should never take away. The third is the pursuit of happiness. And that isn't just wanton hedonism. What it means is quite profoundly, you have the right to earn and keep the fruits of your own labor. What a concept, life, liberty, and the right to earn and keep what it is that you earn. They aren't just nice sounding words. What I say to you is this, our founders gave us the ultimate social compact that governments were instituted among men's for one reason, just to secure the inalienable rights that were given to us by a creator. So government can't interfere with them and certainly government can't take those fundamental rights away from us. And that's what makes us an exceptional nation. And as Phil said, the modern Tea Party stands for three very basic things. Number one, we are taxed enough already. Number two, government should not spend more money than what it takes in. And number three, government should live under the Constitution. Pretty extreme, right? Pretty radical, right? Last night, our Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden, said that the Tea Party is crazy and that the Tea Party lacks judgment. Well, that's rich, because if these are the principles that we stand for, I think that whether you're Democrat or whether you're Republican, they're ones that you would agree with that this is what brings for American greatness. If these ideas are extreme, then that's all we need to know about the challenges in the arena of ideas. On each of these three, unfortunately, our current president has a failing grade. Every step of the way, he's pushed for government that would have a more intrusive role in all of our lives. And the president telegraphed his intentions during his very first inaugural address when he said, it's time to, quote, begin again the work of remaking America. He went on to say that we should no longer be asking the question whether government is too small or too big, Instead, he offered we should simply pursue government to get the job done. Well, Mr. President, the job isn't getting done for the American people, and I think we know that all too well. Of course, some of us realize that the question of whether government has the right to do something is far more important than, than the question of if government has the ability to do something. 